About, geez, must be 25 years ago now, it was a very long time ago, we realised we had two problems in the internet, and this is around 1990. We were going to run out of address space in IPv4, fine. But there was another problem, that the routing table, what we use to tell everybody about where everybody else is, this sort of digital map of the internet, we were running out of room on computers. The map was growing faster than computers were growing. And so as we tried to struggle with both of these problems, on the one side we developed V6 for the addressing issue, but on the other side we're not quite sure about routing. We're never quite sure when it's going to explode because routing is an unconstrained problem. Anybody can add more routes to the internet at any time. There's no one to say yes, no one to say no. So there's this ever-present thought that if it gets too big, the maps won't fit anymore. And so for years we've been tracking the BGP table going, well, how fast does it grow and what does it tell us? And so this is again this year one of these presentations that go, well, what happened in the last year? We've run out of V4 addresses. Surely the pace of growth of this map of the V4 internet should be slowing. Bizarrely, it's not. We add about 50,000 new routing entries every year. Have done for the last 10 years. Process is just cranking out more entries. And then when we look at, well, if we run out of addresses, what's happening? And interestingly enough, last year, 20% of the addresses that were actually added into the routing table come from allocations made decades ago. That when we ran out of allocating addresses, which we have, we're now seeing folk transferring and leasing addresses from very, very old allocations and bringing them back to life, which is actually what we wanted out of the transfer market. So yes, the routing table shows us that there's a certain amount of reuse of addresses now as we're running out. The other side of the issue is with V6. You know, how quickly is that growing? How long will it be before it becomes big? The answer is not very good. Right now, it's about 5% of the size of the V4 table, and the growth is not mind-blowingly large. We've got to do more. At this pace, it'll take us more than 20 years when the two networks come into size. That's sort of comparable, that's too long. Things need to change more for this to happen. The, I then looked at, well, what else is scaling and what's the problem? Because routers have to cope with a number of things, not just the number of entries, the size of the map, but it's actually got to push the cars through. And the other thing that we've done over the last 20 years is 20 years ago, the largest circuit around was a couple of megabits per second. This year, it's 100 billion bits per second. That means that cars that used to happen every 67 microseconds now happen every nanosecond or so. We're doing up to just a little under a billion packets per second now on some of these networks. That's stressing us out. Because while we've been able to make faster and bigger processes for years, since about 2005, the computers and memory aren't getting any faster. Bigger, but not faster. So we're actually in fibre optics making faster networks that actually deliver more bits. But over in the silicon industry, we've stopped making faster chips. Since 2005, nothing's getting any faster. And the two are getting a bit imbalanced. So these days, we actually expect terabit networks to hit production, standardisation and production, over the coming three or four years. But that means we're going to need memory running at least twice the speed that the best memory on the planet runs today. And memory hasn't increased in speed for years. And we're not quite sure how we're going to handle this, that all of a sudden the photons are moving faster than the switched electrons. And that is fascinating.